It's time to imagine better health with CHI Health. Today's focus, something so common in men. All of us will experience it at some point if you're not already. Enlarged prostate is a universal problem for men as they age. It usually begins around the age of 60. Yeah, so what can you do about it? It's a pleasure to welcome CHI Health urologist Stephen Leslie. Thanks, doctor, Hi, for doctor. stopping by. It's good to have you back. Nice um, to be back. Thank you. And so we have this sheet, right? Uh, we'll get to this in a second, but there's some very in interesting questions on it. But for men, I guess exactly what's happening with the prostate as we age? Well, the prostate is an organ that is designed for one specific purpose, and that is to help produce semen and, sperm and nourish the sperm. It has no other function. But its location, it's between the bladder and the outside world. As we get older, it tends to grow and enlarge. Eventually, it enlarges to the point where the passage inside gets blocked, and then men have symptoms. Mm -hmm. This usually happens somewhere around age 60 or so, mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. earlier, sometimes later, sometimes never. But most men are going to have a problem sooner or later. What are those symptoms? Uh, they vary. Usually, they're either obstructive, directly from blockage of the passage, mm -hmm. or irritative, meaning the bladder is trying hard to push the water through and it's not m doing it very well. So that means urgency, frequency, going to the bathroom often, getting up a lot at night, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I, we're talking about this. You have this symptom score questionnaire that you gave to me, and um, you ask all new patients to fill this out. What, oh. what can it tell you, this questionnaire? Uh, this was designed by the American Urological Association. It's designed to be very simple. Uh, it takes five, maybe ten minutes at most to fill it out. Mm -hmm. And it asks a series of questions asking you to rate your symptoms according on a scale of one to five. Mm -hmm. Uh, the higher the number, the more bothersome the symptom. For example, how often do you get up at night typically mm -hmm. to, to go urinate? If it's, uh, if it's twice, that's two points. If it's none, mm -hmm. it's zero. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, how often would you describe the stream as being weak? If it's mm -hmm. all the time, that would be a five. If it's never, that would be a zero. And you add up these numbers, and for most people, if the, if the final score is 10 or more, that suggests that they should probably talk to a physician, get checked mm -hmm. out, because there's a lot of things we can do, both medical and surgical, to help them. And I think that's for, for I hope everybody watching, the takeaway is there is no point in suffering because you have options to, to solve the problem. Let's start with, I guess, medical treatments, and then we'll go to surgical. Well, I'm so, a surgeon. I love surgery. <laughs> you love surgery. But... Medical yeah. treatment uh -huh. is something we almost always try first. There are two types, there are two types of medications, mm -hmm. those that work by relaxing muscle tension. These are called alpha blockers. They work fairly quickly, but they don't change the growth of the prostate. Mm -hmm. So we have another set of medications, the 5-ARIs, uh, five mm -hmm. or these inhibit the growth of the prostate, but they take months to work. Mm -hmm. So by using both of these together, whichever one is most appropriate or using them together, we can usually solve the symptoms for most people initially. Mm -hmm. Eventually, it may overcome the benefit of the medical treatment. Then we have to look at surgical options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, so if the prostate grows, I guess, too big, it gets to be a big problem, that's when you consider surgery. Usually when the medical treatments don't work or are unacceptable for some reason, mm -hmm. then we have to consider a surgery. The surgeries are very, are very safe uh -huh. and are very well tolerated. And we're looking at three of those right now. Are these the three most common types? These are the three most common types. Transurethral resection means we go uh, under anesthesia. We use an instrument and literally carve out the center of the prostate to enlarge the passage. Mm -hmm. Now the passage is enlarged. It's no longer obstructing. The symptoms mm -hmm. are resolved. This has been done since roughly the mid-40s. It's the tried and true gold standard as far as surgical treatment. Uh, later on, we started using lasers. It still gets rid of the tissue in much the same way, but it's a little more restrictive. Uh, the prostate is too big. Uh, it's not as easily done. Mm -hmm. You're using a laser, which tends to burn the tissue uh, a little bit more. And you don't have tissue in your hand when you're done to send to pathology and mm -hmm. perhaps find a cancer if it's there. Sure. But it has the advantage of better control of bleeding. Yeah. And just recently is a new one, something called Urolift. And this is designed to be the most minimally invasive of these types of treatments. Mm -hmm. It's literally just a suture with a couple of uh, anchors, and the, the picture's on the screen now. And what it does, it just pushes the bulk tissue out of the way. Mm -hmm. huh. It's not awesome. carved, it's not treated, it's not vaporized, it's not cut. It's merely pushed out of the way, much like you would use a ribbon to pull the curtain or yeah. drape out of the way. And you can see on this picture, the passageway on the right is, is much wider. Right, and, it may, and this opens up the passage and relieves the symptoms, and because it's uh, simple to do, requires minimal anesthetic, mm -hmm. it looks like it lasts quite well. So this is something new and exciting because it's so minimally invasive. Mm -hmm. It can be done very quickly and has minimal side effects. With so many options, why, why do people go on with symptoms? I mean, I'm sure in some cases well, you see patients for years. We're talking about men here, right? I mean, <laughs> we just talked about right. this a few days ago on the show. 
men don't get treatment, uh -huh. they're less likely to go to the doctor. You know why better than most, because men don't go to see doctors mm -hmm. until things get really bad really or their bad. wives force them. Uh -huh. yeah. But is it fear? Is it embarrassment? What do you hear from patients who've suffered for years? Much, a lot of it is, is fear. Uh, we have this macho image, uh, he-man, uh, uh, you can work through everything, mm -hmm. man up. Uh, work through the pain, mm -hmm. uh, but this is very bothersome. If you're getting up every couple of hours uh, at night, it's going to bother you. It, it sets a uh, quality of life is dramatically affected. You're not getting enough sleep, and God knows what it's doing to your partner. Yeah. Uh, plus, this can often be related to sexual uh, dysfunction as well. Yeah. Well, you want our viewers out there, they can contact you because you have free materials, both for uh, treatment options and, I guess, surgical options as well. Mm -hmm. We have three different handouts. Uh, the first one is just a simple uh, symptom score. Like I said, it takes five or ten minutes, and it's enough to give you an idea whether medical treatment really mm -hmm. is likely to, to help you. The other two deal with both medical treatment, which mm -hmm. is the initial type, yep. and surgery, if you've already been on medical treatment, it's not working, to give you an idea about what those other options are like. This is the sort of thing that we're talking about here, so handouts like this. I foresee the women in the men's lives are the ones who are calling you today to get these, and then they're just leaving them on the counter in the kitchen and saying, Listen, I was watching the morning blend. We can do something about this. It sounds pretty simple. Dr. Leslie, thank you for coming in and explaining it all to us. We appreciate your time. You're very welcome. Yeah, good information, Dr. Thank yeah, you. Thanks a lot.